Well, hello, Calca students and seekers of truth. In this video, we continue our study of a topic called completing the square. You don't know what that phrase mean just, means just yet. That's okay, but we're just going to build on the pattern that we had last time. So notice that if we have x, a variable, variable plus a number, quantity squared, we end up with this pattern here, x squared plus twice times that number, x, and then plus that number squared. All right, so now we're going to go in the reverse direction. Let's factor the following. Okay, so we'll do our little trick as before. We make the big X. We put the 36 up here and the negative 12 down here. And so we're looking for two numbers that add to 36 and, I'm sorry, that multiply to 36 and add to negative 12. So it'll take you a little bit of time, maybe some little bit of guessing and testing, but it's not hard to see that it's going to be negative 6 and negative 6. So when we do x minus 6 times itself, um, we're going to end up with x squared minus 12x plus 36. If you'd like to verify, you can hit pause and distribute this, and you'll see that we get back to the original problem here. But we could factor it. We can go to an even a step further and say, well, this is a quantity times itself. It's x minus 6 times itself. So that's going to be x minus 6 quantity squared. And you see here that our pattern that we had before um, is continuing when we have a quantity squared. We end up with x squared negative 12 here um, is in fact twice negative 6. Okay, so let's try this next one here. Two numbers that multiply to 4 and also add to 4. Well, the only possibility here is 2 and 2. So this is going to factor into x plus 2 times x plus 2. And that's really the same thing as saying x plus 2 times itself, or x plus 2 squared. And again, pay attention to the patterns that we have going on up there. We use this number here, 2, double that, and we get this number up here. Okay. All right, let's keep going. Two numbers that multiply to 49, but add to 14, or and add to 14. So that would be 7 and 7. So this is x plus 7 times x plus 7, which gives us x plus 7 quantity squared. Ah, and now one more, right? Except this time we don't have a, an exact number. We have some letters here. But we're looking for two values that would multiply to p squared, but add to 2p. So we look at the x's as variables. We treat the, the p here as like a, a constant whose value we don't really know. And of course, the answer to this would be p and p. Because you, if you add these two up, you get 2 times p. And if you were to multiply them, you get p squared. So when we factor, we get x plus p times x plus p, which is the same thing as x plus p quantity squared, okay? just like we had before. So hopefully now, um, you see how what we've done here in these four problems are kind of reverses of the first four problems that we did. The first four, we had a condensed form and we expanded it. Now we have an expanded form and we're condensing or factoring it. Okay? So now let's take this up a notch and let's do some filling in of the blanks. So if we were to do x plus 4 quantity squared, what would go in here? Well, we can do a little bit of the, the problem, right? x plus 4 times x plus 4. So this is going to factor into x squared plus 8x plus 4 times 4, which is 16. So that's the number that goes in there. Okay. All right, how about here? If we had uh, x plus 3 quantity squared, well... If we had this problem, we can just distribute. It would be x plus 3 times itself. And that would multiply to get x squared plus 3x plus 3x. So that's 6x plus 9. Okay. So 
what would go in the blank here? Well, I have a minus sign here, so we'll have to change that to a plus. And this will give us 6x. Okay. Or the other way that you might be able to write this is uh, minus a negative 6x. But it's cleaner just to change that and say that it's positive 6x. Okay. All right. This problem here um, is a bit of a typo. This should say x squared minus 16x. So let's correct that first. And then plus the blank. All right, so when we multiply this out, we're going to get x minus 8 times x minus 8. And so that's going to give us x squared minus 16x. And the last term here is going to be negative 8 times negative 8. So that's going to give us 64. Okay, now comes the really tricky problems. We have two blanks, two blanks that we're going to work with here. Okay, so I'm going to solve this blank first. We'll call this, this part here, we'll call it W. Now, we know that when we do x plus W um, times itself, right, it's going to be x squared Sorry, let me correct that. Yeah, it's going to be x squared plus 2w plus w squared. So that tells me that whatever value goes to here, it must be w squared. Now, all that remains for us to figure out is, well, what exactly is w? Or I'm sorry, this should be 2wx. I forgot to write that x, okay? So, but you see here how this matches 2wx matches with negative 10x. So that tells us that negative 10 must be equal to 2w. So w must be equal to negative 5. Divide both sides by 2. And w squared must be equal to 25. Okay. So now if I uh, can fill in the blanks now, let's see if I can do that. I'll, re I'll write it down here in a slightly different color. This would be x squared minus 10x, just as before, plus w squared, we know, so that's 25. That's going to go into that blank, and that's going to be equal to x plus w, which is plus negative 5, or x minus 5, quantity squared. All right, let's end this on a very high note, a very challenging problem. Two blanks, and both... And there's just letters here. And we're going in the reverse direction. So you see here, if we look at back at number 12, to find w, I would take this coefficient in front of the x and divide it by 2. So this term right here, whatever that number is, divided by 2, that's what goes in this blank. Okay? And then whatever is in this blank times itself, is going to is going to be what goes over here. Okay? So this this blank right here is going to be b over 2 times itself or b over 2 squared. It's like w. b over 2 is w if you want to compare this problem in the previous one. Well, um, so you can write b over 2 quantity squared or you can actually square it and it's really b squared over 4. So all of these problems here, these practices, they're meant not yet to complete the square, but to build up to this idea of completing the square, which we will most certainly explore and master in the next coming videos. As always, thank you for working hard. Ask for help if you need it. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day.